Okay. I cannot believe that worked. Alright, fingers crossed that these things are good. This is almost the exact same motor I have on my bulldozer, just a little bit smaller. One horsepower. Alright, let me cut straight to it. I've built a bunch of boats in the last few years, and there's one kind of boat that I've been wanting to build the whole time that I've not been able to for financial, technical, te technological reasons. And there's two limitations. One is battery weight, and the other is solar panel weight, because both those things are so heavy. Um, and I want to build a lightweight, sleek, fast, solar-powered boat, uh, dual, dual solar-powered and human-powered. I, I want to put pedals on it, too for like long distance trips when I don't need to take like two tons of cargo with me and I just want to go fast. So I want to make this thing go like twice as fast as my cargo boat. My cargo boat's amazing, but it's not fast. So two things happened recently. A friend told me about these lithium iron phosphate batteries that some dude was selling on eBay. They're used, but they're really good quality and supposedly have most of their life left. Like like 80 to 90 percent of their life left so even if they have half of their life left it'll still be in the thousands of cycles because those things have thousands of cycles um, so I bought a few of those and they were way cheaper than brand new and uh, the other thing is I started writing uh, solar panel companies hoping I could get sponsored uh, and get some company to send me some solar panels and then I'd show them and you know give them some advertising um, so I wrote a bunch of companies and got no answers or, you know, not good answers. But then this one company, Solbion, 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 I don't know how to say the name exactly, but they responded very, they were just like, all right, let's send you over to our, our technical guy. We'll, we'll figure out what you need. And I'm like talking to the technical guy and he's like, here, we got these amazing solar panels. We can send you, or we can get you four of those on your boat. And I'm thinking... Am I paying for these, or are they sending them to me? So at the end, he's like, "Okay, we'll sponsor you. We'll sponsor you with these four solar panels, the connectors, a whole bunch of like cables and stuff, like the whole, everything." Uh, so they're sending that out to me supposedly for free, which is amazing because these are high quality ones. You, in a previous video, I I did a review on a like a cheap lightweight solar panel, and it melted the first time I used it. So I didn't want to use those. I, I need higher quality ones that aren't going to melt right away. So they're sending those. So with those two limitations gone, I have lightweight batteries with high power density and lightweight solar panels that are good quality. I can make the boat I really want to make. So here's, here's the design I've got so far. First I had two general thoughts. One catamaran and one trimaran. And I'm going to go with the trimaran. Not the catamaran for a couple reasons. One. The floor of the catamaran has to be above the pontoon, so it has to be above the waves. So I have to be sitting up higher than I do here. Uh, the other thing is, I want to make it so the boat can get skinny or wider. So when I'm out in the open ocean with waves, I can have, uh, I can have the boat real wide for good stability. But then there's all these little rivers and nooks and crannies I want to get into, and parking spaces, and all kinds of thing like, things like that. Mostly rivers where a wide boat just doesn't fit. So I want to be able to pull it in skinnier. And it's much more complicated to do that with a catamaran because there's a floor in the middle. It's just more complicated. It's much less complicated to have the main pontoon here. It doesn't have to change at all. And the two side ones out here, they can just be on swivelers and swing in, you know, forward or back. Um, and there's not that much pressure on them, so they'll, they'll be easier to move and, uh, you know, if there happens to be a problem with one of these, I really only need one to drive as long as I'm leaning and don't tip over on the side where I've lost one. Not that I expect to lose one. Um, but so, like, I could lean over this way or get weight on this side of the boat while I'm shifting this one if I need to. The other cool thing about this uh, is as I load the boat, I can make it so these can slide up and down so that the side pontoons can raise and lower uh, to accommodate you know different weight in the boat and if I'm driving along and the sun is on that side and uh, it's getting late in the day and the sun's getting kind of low 
I can actually move this pontoon up a little bit, then lean the boat toward the sun, you know, 10 or 15 degrees, which makes a big difference late or early in the day. Another thing is I want to hide the motor. So I want it to be inside. With the catamaran style, I'd have to hide it in one side or the other side, and that would, you know, unbalance the boat. This way, I'll just put it right in the back, kind of like... Let me draw this a little darker. All right, so the front of the pontoon, pretty self-explanatory. The back, I'll have a motor here, shaft coming down, and I'm not going to rely on a seal over here to keep water from coming up. I'm going to, when I build the pontoon, when I build the hull, I'm going to build a tube into it that comes right up. So water can actually come up the tube up to whatever the water level is. So I'll have to make sure the, the motor, I might have to raise this section back here a little bit, but I'll just have to make sure the, the motor stays above the water line wherever I am. And maybe I'll, I'll put a seal there too, but that way, if there's a seal failure, it's, it's not a problem. I was also wondering if I'd be able to run a tube from that tube down to here to suck out any water. Because, you know, it would create suction out here when this is driving. It could suck up water. But I'll have to play with that and see if that even works. Uh, then, you know, hide batteries back there and the rudder back here. So why do I want to hide the motor under here? Oh, and I'll... I'll, I'll make the, the propeller removable so I can take the propeller off and pull the motor up to get the, the shaft out of the way uh, if I ever want to beach the boat somewhere or, or put it up somewhere where the bottom's going to get hit. So, all right, why do I want to hide the motor? I want to hide the motor. I also want to hide the solar panels because there are a lot of high crime areas around here. Like, people get their boat motor stolen, their their solar panel stolen. No one's going to steal my weird electric motor setup. But someone might steal the solar panels. Um, and if there's no motor, they, they won't know that there's any batteries there to steal or solar panels or anything as long as I put uh, a cover over the solar panels and make it look like it's just a shade anytime I go into, you know, a bad neighborhood. So then I'm, I'm going to sit here and I want to be able to pedal, right? Of my pedal thing here and I think I was just thinking about this before I came into this video I think I'm gonna do the same setup here just forward with the pipe coming down so I was thinking about it a lot there's a lot of real complicated ways to do it um, I don't want to make a bunch of complicated stuff I, I was thinking originally about having a gearing that made the pedals and the motor add into the same shaft so the power of both would go into the same thing but if I have a problem with that shaft anywhere, that means I'm dead in the water. This way, one system can be completely down and the other system will work. And I like that redundancy because being able to get home, uh, you know, in worst case scenarios is, is a big consideration. And I want the cross section of this middle pontoon to be pretty skinny. Uh, about as wide as my pedal boat pontoons. Let me let me show you that. All right, so my pedal boat here is like just wide enough to sit in comfortably and pedal. I can't pedal when I'm sitting on the dock, um, but, and I don't want to get any wider than this because I want it to be real sleek going through the water. And I, I I might have a lip here that comes out a little bit wider, partly to block waves and. I uh, just have a little bit wider spot to rest my arms or I don't know, just to put stuff. Up here in the front there will be a, you know, a sealed chamber with a door probably here so I can put dry stuff in there. But I'll probably fill a lot of it, like this whole area with foam and bottles and just flotation material. And then back here I think I'll do that in a lot of the spaces, maybe all all through here. I want it to be able to float even if there's significant damage. Now back here where the rudder is, I want the boat to come like right to a flat point right here, almost. Almost to a flat point. Just wide enough that the rudder basically matches it so it's like smooth right into the rudder. When I was talking about making the the middle pontoon a little wider, I might just, yeah, just like have a little thing over like this. Because then waves 
could come in and hit that and they'll get splashed back down. Then of course the solar panels will go up here to put me in the shade. And it'll be the whole boat will be nice and low because I can get right down inside the pontoon. And I'll probably make it so the solar panels, at least some portion of them, can move out of the way or something so I can load like sheets of plywood if I need to into the boat. I was having this debate in my head, which was, I don't want this to be a cargo boat, but I do want to be able to carry some amount of cargo, like a certain number of people, or like how much, where do I draw that line? Then I realized I don't really need to draw the line because I thought of something. Okay, my middle pontoon is fixed. I'll make sure that can hold me and my kids. Maybe their mom too, we'll see. And these normally will just be enough to keep the boat stable. But the since they're just attached here and here, I can remove these and attach cargo pontoons. Like if I need to go get something a little bigger, but not so big that I need to take the cargo boat. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, this is gonna be the best boat ever. <sighs> Okay, so back here, why am I not having uh, motor shaft go straight down, gear to sideways? Because of the extra complication, the gears, like, you know, that, that kind of stuff always is great while it's working perfectly, but there's pretty much nothing that can go wrong with a straight shaft. And I've also found them to be surprisingly efficient. Like, any efficiency that's lost by the, you know, the angle of the thing, you'd lose that in the gearing anyway. This is the boat I was driving before my cargo boat. It's been sort of decommissioned. I was thinking about just turning this back on, but now that I've got the super solar panels and the super batteries, I'm going to make a whole new thing. Uh, but the pontoons will be roughly the same size as these. These are 20, 23 feet long, 7 meters roughly. And uh, this has been my fastest boat so far. I got it up to 9 miles an hour with a straight shaft out the back and a one and a half horsepower motor. The, the trimaran, uh, not sure what, what its name is yet, but I'm, gonna, I'm getting a one horsepower motor for it. The same motor that's in my bulldozer, but the one in the bulldozer is one and a half horsepower. So this is going to be a one horsepower. If I happen to want it to be stronger, I might just swap it out with the bulldozer one because I never run the bulldozer full power anyway. I think that one horsepower plus me pedaling is going to move that boat pretty fast. I'm aiming for over 10 knots, so like 12 miles an hour. We'll see. Um, Alright, I guess I guess now that I have the, the batteries coming, the solar panels coming, and I ordered a motor too. It's a Leeson 24 volt DC one horsepower motor. Uh, I guess I need to make that middle pontoon. I could use the mold that I used on that boat I just showed, because I still have that mold, but it's imperfect. It's pretty good, but I can improve on it, so I'm going to make one even better. I wonder if the shark slicer mold can make the shape I'm looking for. I should check it out.